Hey, before we get started, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Welcome, Transformers fans. Let's get to it. Okay, first up, we've got uh, this envelope from Asia. A couple small things here. So this is for uh, Make Toys Gun Dog. Um, some other faces for him. So uh, yeah, I went to Make Toys website and found out that uh, they actually had um, extra accessory faces that you could buy uh, for him. So that's pretty cool. I don't know if he's going to be my final version of Hound, but uh, let's see, I'm not sure what these are. Um, but if he is, then um, I've got cool alternate faces I can put on him. And um, they gave us, they gave me two different color uh, heads, which is very cool. Um, so you have the option for the dark green or the light green gun hound. So very cool for Make Toys. And, and this is, uh, um, apparently uh, they, have an ex they have exclusive offers on there. And uh, you can only get this through Make Toys uh, website itself. I'm not sure what these little blue guys are, but uh, that's all right. All right, so that's from Make Toys. Package number two comes to us from Australia. Let's open up this puppy and see what's inside. All right, it's an interesting box. All right. Well, they did a decent job packing it. I like the fact that they took this seriously. So I believe this was from Australia. And uh, we already unboxed MP13, but this is the MP13 that I got from, uh, I think it was eBay. And I wasn't quite sure the quality of the product that I was getting. Um, I mean, I want the boxes to be in decent shape. And um, this eBayer said that uh, the box had some damage, I think it was. And uh, the description of the product didn't mention that. So that's why I went ahead and bought another MP13. But um, this doesn't really look bad. I mean, you've got some corner damage here, but, uh, and some edge wear, but that's not bad. I mean, it's overall looking really nice. I'm a little concerned that this might be used because I'm seeing scotch tape, multiple pieces of scotch tape all over this thing. So it doesn't look like um, manufacturing uh, packaging. It looks like after the fact packaging. And there's a tape here. You can see all the, you can see the gloss. Looks like they tried to fix this little rip, which is cool that they tried to do that. But unless they were just trying to be preventative, uh, this looks kind of fishy. But regardless, I think the box looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and open it. Yeah, here we go. Oh, this is so cool. I have been wanting this guy ever since I was a kid. I never had the G1 version. So this is very cool. I can't believe this is happening to me. Hmm. 
wonder who left this here. Let's see what we got underneath there. We got an instruction manual and something else. Let's check it out. Holy cow, it's a, <laughs> it's a Transformers eraser. It's Megatron. That's pretty wild. Wow, that's not official, is it? I can make him a Decepticon with purple Autobot stickers? Wow, these are all backwards. Now, why do I have large Autobot stickers? I don't know. But uh, there you go. I think this is proof that it was uh, a used buy. And because uh, I don't think this is an official part of MP13. We've got the uh, instruction manual with a card here, collector's card. Let's check out this collector's card. Ooh, it's got a couple of them. Why does it have a couple of them? Oh, that's right. Because he comes with laser beak, uh, apparently known as Condor. Cool. Pretty cool looking. So I went to uh, check out my official MP10 uh, collector's card and a couple of differences to be noticed. We've got round corners on this card and um, we've got this uh, little insert here that is not in this package. I don't think, let's double check. All right, so that is not the same insert. And is there anything else? I mean, the brochure looks nice, but it's just a little suspicious that the collector's card um, is cut differently. So if you know why that could be, again, here are the MP13 ones I just got with this bot. And notice the square corners, ever so slightly rounded it looks like on most of the corners. But compared to this, I mean those corners are obviously rounded on MP10. If you've got an answer for why these are more square and these are more round, help me learn a little bit more about uh, the Transformers that are out there leave me a note in the comments below and help, uh, you know, your fellow viewers. And yet another difference I just found, they noticed these holes in the MP13's bag. Um, you can see their little ventilation uh, cutouts uh, ever so slightly. There you go, circle right there. Also, it's got a cut here and um, right here. Also, there's no print on this bag, no precautions. Whereas on my MP10, there are no holes that I've seen in the bag. And it's got this print on it. We've got this caution, plastic bags can be dangerous to avoid danger of suffocation, blah, blah, blah. That is not on MP13's bag. So but it's definitely not the same as my official MP10 convoy. So there he is. And there is Laserbeak. Let's get them out of their plastic prisons. All right, what has he got here? So I think this is supposed to be an Energon cube. It looks like it's supposed to open maybe, but uh, not sure why. Cool anyway. An optional alternate uh, cassette window for his chest. 
an accessory set of binoculars or something. I don't know what episode this might be from, if it's from an episode. His other battery cannon blaster. Not sure how it deploys, but there we go. There's a handle. So one of his batteries turns into one of his blasters. Laser Beaks cassette case. And it does say, what does it say here? Transformers. Cool. And of course, Laser Beak himself. Looks pretty nice. And of course, how could you have Soundwave without having Megatron in gun form to wield in battle? Nicely detailed. Look at that silver. That's a nice gunmetal paint there. Very cool that they can get the Decepticon logo that small. Nice. And last but not least, the bot himself. All right, whether or not he's a KO, he's looking really awesome. I don't know if Fans Toys is really gonna be able to um, do any better than the look of this guy. I don't know about the transformation yet. I don't know about the handling, but uh, how much more sound wave can you be? So here's what he looks like in bot mode. So that's Soundwave in bot mode. Let's take a look at Laserbeak in bot mode. All right, there's Laserbeak. Looking pretty cool. Complete with the little surveillance cam. There you go. That, uh, you know, was cool stuff back in the 80s. But now anybody with a cell phone can... Uh, Record some amazing footage, like the stuff you see here on Mixelpix. Very nice. Top down. Underside. This side. That side. And uh, we'll get rid of that little camera there. Pretty cool little buzzard. All right. All right, and now for our two standards for the MP scale test, uh, we have MP10 Convoy, aka Optimus Prime, and MP21 Bumblebee. Let's see how Soundwave stacks up against both of those. I like what I see. I don't know if he's supposed to be exactly as big as Prime, but um, I think the slight height difference, um, you know, kind of accentuates the fact that, uh, you know, Optimus Prime is uh, more heroic and uh, a stronger character overall. Maybe I'm getting a little too philosophic here with their appearances, but let's just suffice it to say he's tall enough in comparison to Optimus and um, tall enough in comparison to Bumblebee. And why shouldn't he be? This is uh, the official Takara Tomy line. So there we go. Soundwave MP13 survives the Mixelpix Transformers Time Warp Takara Tomy Masterpiece Scale Comparison Test. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at how well this guy seems he's put together. Right off the bat, he's a little jiggly. Not necessarily a bad thing. He does stand up straight. He's got friction joints for his shoulders. No ratchet, but the friction joint feels good. He's got pretty freely moving elbow joints. And wow, okay, he can go almost completely uh, 90 degrees to, um, excuse me, almost a completely 180 degrees to his shoulder. He's got, let's see his hands. His thumb does not move. Um, but he's got an individual index finger and then um, non-moving molded uh, um, additional fingers. So they're meant to be in um, either an open hand kind of a position or a fist position, basically. Let's look at the knee bend. All right, whoops. Knee bend, 90 degrees. And you can flex the foot out. Okay. That's good. 
um, hip joints. <laughs> Let him go more than 90 degrees. Pretty cool. He's got a waist twist, which is good. And he's got a hip twist, also very good. But I doubt he's got an ab crunch. And no, unless you're going to bend him at the hips, he doesn't have an ab crunch per se. So his ankle tilt is decent, but it, so you can extend it. So he's got a nice little extension there. So it goes flat or comes down on that joint. So that's cool. But that's the extent of his ankle tilt inward. His ankle tilt outward can go quite far, but then if this piece is transformed correctly, which I'm not sure it is, um, this piece gets in the way of his ankle tilt a little bit and pushes that piece out. Um, so, but you can still achieve a pretty extreme, if not broken looking ankle tilt. His head tilts up and down and uh, rotates. Oops. Rotates uh, uh, 360. So, pretty posable. Eject button works nicely. Um, I believe this is the tape eject or load button. Um, probably is. Got some good detailing. Bring this up closer for you to see. Uh, if you can see that, nice paint apps here to uh, accentuate the back. It's got some metal apps there, metal app paint, or metal paint apps rather, excuse me. Um, and it looks clean. Nicely painted on the sculpts. So one thing that I noticed that bummed me out a little bit was this is apparently a used MP13. Now, I thought I was, I thought what I had bought in this eBay buy was a new uh, MP13, but um, the buy is old enough and I don't have the um, emails or the uh, messages um, saved, um, which actually prove whether or not this was supposed to be new or used. But um, this uh, is apparently used. So um, I can't say that the eBay seller um, didn't give me what I paid for, but I was pretty sure I thought I was buying a new MP13. And the evidence I have for this not being new is this. Right there, if you can see that highlight, it looks like a paintbrush application. And there seems to be a little bit of a surface scratch there that was trying to be hidden. If you can see right there on the thigh. So uh, it's a very minor thing and it was nicely cleaned up. Um, and overall, this character looks really cool. Uh, but it is kind of a bummer when you think you're getting something new and it's not. So like I said, I can't be 100% sure that it really was supposed to be new, but um, this is a, a used product, it seems. And uh, yeah, on top of that, I'm not even sure that it's uh, not a KO. So word to the wise, MP13 is out right now. Go buy your own copy. It's a reissue from Takara Tomy. Buy it from a reputable resource that you trust, and you know, like TF Source or Big Bad Toy Store or tfdirect.com or... Um, you know, whichever ones you, you've dealt with in the past and you trust. This just brings back uh, some childhood awe. Seeing Soundwave here for the first time in my collection. Whether it's a KO or not, it's uh, looking really cool. It feels pretty good in my hands. And uh, it's nice looking. It has those G1 feels for sure. Cool thing here 
is uh, you've got this button, reverse and fo fast forward, that actually depress, play, and um, record and stop, not really. Um, cool little detail here is that they gave you this power adapter plug port. So that's a cool detail. And of course, um, you know, you've got the volume dial here, which unfortunately doesn't roll, but um, it looks the part. Oh yeah, and then what does this do? I'm not sure what that does. Maybe that's supposed to be the power switch. Um, and you've got this nice um, jeweled kind of, uh, or red glass indicator here. Looks very realistic uh, for something from the 80s. And uh, really like that detail. And for the first time, let's go ahead and put Laserbeak in his spot. And there they are, laser beak and sound wave. Now I should be able to load this, I think, with more tapes. Let's see, yeah, I can, I can go ahead and load that back. You press back and then it makes more room for more tapes. So you can put more tapes inside here. And then if my guess is correct, this button here shuffles them forward. There we go. And there he is, he's at the front of the, uh, of Soundwave. Very cool, very cool. All right, I'm gonna take this moment to get on my soapbox a little bit. Um, I am not a cartoon accurate quote unquote fan. And I just want uh, you to imagine what this awesome looking toy would look like if it were done in cartoon quote unquote accurate uh, colors. So we've got some nice gold accents here. We've got some uh, chrome, uh, chrome applied here to the buttons. Uh, we've got this nice steel accent there. If this were cartoon accurate, I could very well see it being painted in flat colors. That maybe this gray would no longer be a metallic gray and it would just be a flat paint gray. That the gold would be yellow. Uh, that the buttons would be simply flat gray as well. Uh, I don't see the benefit to trying to match the exact color palette of a cartoon when in my mind as a kid, those cartoons represented an object in reality. So though I was seeing it as a cartoon in my world at that time, that object was a real object and would have real object characteristics such as metallic finishes and, uh, you know, nice paint and nice chrome. So let me know what you think about the cartoon accurate issue um, and the trend of uh, the MP scale transformers going to more cartoon accurate color schemes and paint jobs and details. Let me know what your definition is. I've read that there are apparently more than one definition for what cartoon accurate means to people. I'd be interested to hear what you have to say, you know, maybe engage in a little bit of discussion. It would be nice for my collection if the trend could get reversed from the cartoon accurate to more of the uh, original stylings that uh, the MP scale transformers had. Uh, Mastermind Creations seems to be keeping it alive and um, X Transbots uh, seems to at least be putting options out there. And I'm glad those options are out there. I just hate to see them go away for the Takara Tomy line itself. Um, I'm looking forward to what Hound will look like when he's released. But, you know, I'm not exactly enthused by the kind of drab, flat kind of colors they've given him. Yeah, so that's it. Let me know in the comments. What do you think about Cartoon Accurate? Well, thanks for joining me for this episode of Mixelpix Transformers Time Warp. I'm Mike. Go ahead and give me a like, subscribe, and leave your comments below. And until next time, happy collecting, everybody. And watch out for KOs. Hey, thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe for more Mixelpix videos and leave me your comments below about what you liked and you didn't like about the video. Until next time, see ya.